Yo YouTube, what is happening? It's your boy Cray and we back with another one and as you all know what we do, we get right to it. Little side note, if you hear any panting or anything like that at any point in time, I have my dog here with me and uh, he likes to jump on me and run around even while I'm recording. So if you hear a little, <laughs> just, <laughs> just disregard that. And also I do want to let you guys know I'll be reading a lot of this stuff verbatim right off of the actual update patch notes section from ea so if you hear me you know stutter or anything that's because sometimes i try to read too fast and yeah things kind of <laughs> hit the fan from there so jumping right into things solos i'm sorry my people that want solos it ain't happening why is it not happening hold on let me go ahead and uh read this for you and let you know why so they said in the patch notes update now what about solos question mark when we introduced solos as a limited time mode last year, we saw it actually negatively impacted the game, especially when it came to new player retention. We've also purposely designed legends and their abilities to complement team play and squad composition, but when played solo, some legends abilities become useless. These are just some of the reasons we decided to not include solos in today's update. We are still exploring ways to allow a solo experience, but for now, grab a friend or two and jump into the arena. Okay, so that's clearing all that up. Solos ain't coming, but they're trying to figure out ways. Maybe they create a solo queue where nothing but solos queue into duos or queue into uh, trios or ranked or whatever. I have no idea what they're doing, but I'll be very interested to see in the new gosh i can't talk forgive me <laughs> in the near future what respawn decides to do to allow solo players to experience the game they want to experience you know and experience it in their own way i'm sure i'm sure they'll figure something out so don't worry about that now switching gears here let's talk about some of these weapon changes that are happening nothing too crazy nothing too extensive we got another g7 scout nerf they reduced the headshot scale from 2.0 to 1.75 and reduce the leg shot scale from 0.9 to 0.75 and also slightly reduce the projectile speed. So the G7 Scout got a little nerf, but let's be honest, it's still gonna shred. It's still going, okay, it's gonna shoot. Instead of shooting like pop, 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 it's gonna shoot like pop, pop, pop. But guess what? Those pop pops is still gonna be clapping cats left and right. So the G7 Scout is, I ain't worried about it. The L-Star got a little bit of a quality of life change, which is pretty good. So check this out. The L-Star will reset its view kick pattern much more quickly to avoid a horizontal recoil, feeling like it goes in an unpredictable direction while feathering the trigger. And also, the time before overheating is reduced from 2.4 to 2.2 now. So instead of 25 shots before it overheats, it's now 23 shots. I think that's a good change because I don't even think about picking up the L-Star because I don't know which way it's going to shoot. And I don't feel like losing a gunfight and I don't feel like raging and throwing my PC or throwing my PS4 and just going psycho. I don't feel like doing that. So I don't even touch it. Maybe I might give it a chance now. Who knows? The Kraber has an increased headshot damage multiplier from 2.05 to now 3.0. So it should now always down a target with the headshot, even if they're a fortified character with a level three helmet and a full evil shield. Damn! Now, I'm about to be getting mapped by everybody. Whatever. <laughs> That's fine. That's cool. The Kraber, yeah, I mean, it's the Kraber. If you can hit me in the head with the Kraber, you deserve it. Knock me. It's cool. <laughs> Moving on. Sniper ammo. Now, the ammo pickup has been reduced from 10 to 8, and the inventory stack size is reduced from 20 to 16. So, I guess this is to promote you know more healthy fights and not those long range stupid sniper bouts with the triple takes or the sentinels now people are gonna have to get a little bit closer you know close the gap let's handle things with the r99 or with the flat line and you know let's knuckle up like real legends do maybe this has no effect on that at all maybe people will just start carrying a third stack of, of sniper ammo or a fourth stack whatever it probably won't have a huge impact on the game and <laughs> the last balance change low profile so now limb shots on low profile legends now deal as much damage as body shots and i think this kind of sucks if i'm being honest like low profile legends already already have you know the back end of the stick like it's it's very easy to to lock on to a wraith 
and put her down. I mean, she's going to go into the void, but then you finish her when she comes out of the void. Pathfinder, you can shred. Like, ah, oh, man, that kind of stinks. But it is what it is. I'll be very interested to see player feedback about this. And just we'll see if this affects low profile. Almost at Agents. What the heck? <laughs> low profile Legends even getting selected in an entirety. We'll see. We'll see. All right, y'all, let's talk about some legend changes and more so some legend buffs that are going to be happening. Your man Revenant gets a buff. Why Revenant gets a buff before Mirage? I just talked about this in a video yesterday. Mirage needs the buff, man. He needs the buff. Why does Revenant get the buff before Mirage? I, whatever. Okay, cool. They're working on Revenant, so that's awesome. So they said that player feedback wasn't viable enough. And, oh, no, excuse me. They said that by receiving player feedback that revenant wasn't viable enough it's been made loud and clear by the data showed in the game as well so their goal was to overall bring revenant's effectiveness up in apex legends so now revenant's tactical ability his silence ability its duration status has been doubled it's been increased from 10 seconds to 20 seconds that is that is going to be annoying to fight now <laughs> like for real and silence now disables gibraltar's gun shield that i think that's that's pretty clutch come on now gibby gibby needs to be taken down somehow some way so revenant now can kind of counteract that cool the duration of area of effect is doubled from five seconds to ten seconds again dope he needs that and silence now has two charges that is the game changer so if you miss one silent shot, you ain't even worried about it. You got another one. This, yeah, yeah, this could definitely, definitely make Revenant a little bit more viable here. And now Revenant's Death Totem, characters are respond with 50 health or whatever health they had when they activated, if lower, instead of one. So if you went in there and you activated the totem and you had 30 health, then you respawn back with 30 health. But if you activated the totem with 100 health and you die and go back to the totem, you now have 50 health. That is... <coughs> excuse me a little cough there but that is so much more viable so much more viable because when you respond with one health all i gotta do is just stand there at the totem and literally peck you and you're dead you know that i i don't think that was fair in in any way shape or form so now at least you have somewhat of a chance to respond back at the totem run away heal up a little bit and be ready to fight with your second life so Okay, okay, Revenant now is a little bit more viable. Revenant went from like F tier now to probably B or C tier, I think. We know we'll have to just let this update play out to really see that. Lifeline, our homie Lifeline, come get your birthday, please. Lifeline got a little buff, which is slick. So they removed low profile from Lifeline, which is phenomenal in its own. Lifeline did not need that. Lifeline needed some love. So they removed low profile, which is dope. And now Lifeline also has a new secondary passive. So Lifeline can access secret compartments with more loot on blue bins. You might be like, what is a blue bin? So blue bins are now found randomly replacing ordinary bins. These rare bins will have a secondary compartment that only Lifeline can open. The secondary compartment will always contain some mixture of health items, weapon attachments, and knockdown shields. So now with Lifeline, you can get a little bit more loot here and there. Lifeline now has a little bit more viability. I mean, I would have loved seeing some type of change with her tactical ability or her ultimate ability. Like the care packages, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're useful to an extent. You know, you might get an occasional purple shield from time to time, but mostly you're getting a knockdown shield or a Phoenix kit or something like that. So, I mean, hey, what, what you gonna do about it? And, I mean, you know, her little cute robot dude, when her little cute robot comes out, you know, I mean, yeah, having that health heal is nice, but it would be nice if it can do a little bit more, maybe heal faster, maybe reduce cooldown time. I don't know, something of that nature. But anyway, I'm never going to complain about a Lifeline buff. Never. Never. So shout out to Lifeline. You're getting some love. They hear you. They see you. Now, Wraith gets a little quality of life change. Nothing big. Nothing really affecting Wraith to, in any magnitude at all. Uh, but now Wraith's portal would disappear after four seconds if both ends are outside of the circle. And this change was made to combat players from exploiting the portal to avoid taking damage outside of the ring. So now, if both ends are in the storm, four seconds, portal's gone. 
So if you still have one in in the store, one in out so you can get your teammates out, it's fine. It's not affecting nothing. Not a big deal. So that change, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. People probably aren't even going to notice it. Quick side note, a change that is happening that I would say is much more of a balance change to an item. And this item being the evil armor is pretty lit. So now the overall reduced amount of damage required to evolve the evo armor has decreased so to evolve it from white to blue it went from 100 damage to 75 damage to take it from blue to purple is reduced from 300 damage to 150 damage and then of course to take it from purple to red that's been reduced from 500 damage to 400 damage so now if you accumulate gosh i'm not a mathematician hold on let me do my calculations here if you accumulate 625 damage with the EVO armor on, you will have a Predator level armor. That is an absolute game changer. It literally went from 900 damage down to 625. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see a lot more EVO armors in King's Canyon and or World's Edge. I'm telling you, that is, that's a game changer and that's going to make the EVO armor a lot more viable long term. And lastly, I'm going to just run through these bug fixes or these small quality of life changes real quick just so you guys have an idea of these changes. So check this out. They fixed a bug for cases where match results would not process correctly after players were DC'd or disconnected. They provided some fixes for some script errors. They fixed the bug for cases where taller legends could get stuck in geometry after using Rafe's portal. They fixed the bug where cases of players that were under Revenant's death protection could still be healed by Lifeline's DOC drone and Watts' interceptor pylon. Didn't know that was a thing, but dang, that's patched. <laughs> they also fixed a bug where Mansling with Wraith would cause the camera to clip through the character. Okay, on PS4 they fixed lighting in some interior areas on World's Edge that were appearing too dark. They fixed a bug where sometimes players would lose aim assist after being hit by Revenant's silence ability. Wow, didn't know that was a thing either. They fixed some cases where players would not receive assist credit when using Crypto's drone to scan enemies. They fixed issue or an issue where sometimes players could hear and in rare cases be hit by Revenant's abilities when in the firing range when he's not there. Okay, that happened on numerous occasions. That happened in my aims, tips, and tricks video. Um, cool, cool. Uh, they fixed some cases where the circle would end in a bad or invalid location. Uh, they fixed to help reduce cases of invisible doors. Uh, they fixed the issue where Bangalore's Viceroy skin, where Bangalore's legs were showing in the wrong skin while mantling. Okay, cool. <laughs> they fixed the bug work for cases when Revenant places his ultimate, his death totem on a train and a player responds to it while on the train and the train is moving. The player could be respond somewhere else on the map or even off the map. Good fix. Glad to hear that. Um, the energized charge for the Sentinel sniper rifle can now be canceled with Y or triangle button or probably whatever keybind button you have on your keyboard and mouse. They also fixed the bug for cases where dive trails were visible before exiting the dropship. And then lastly, they fixed the map bug related to exploitable hiding spots in bad geo or geography or geometry. I don't know the right word. Told you guys, when I'm reading stuff in real time, sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle. My eyes go way before my mouth goes and I just, man, gosh, bear with me. I, I thank you all for sitting through that. I know that was, <laughs> I know that was kind of painful. But ultimately, these are all the changes that have dropped and that are live now in update 4.2. If you have not checked it out just yet, make sure you log in on your PlayStation, on your Xbox, on your PC via Origin, and get some games rolling. Slay out, clap out, play duos, play the Bloodhound Town Takeover. And let me know what you guys think about this update. The quality of life changes to some of the guns, to the evil armor, to some of the characters, some of these bug fixes. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. This has been your boy Cray. Until next time, we out. Peace.